Welcome to Helpline Extra, where we take a deeper dive into the topics that we see all the time on Helpline, our regular weekly show with Mothercraft nurse extraordinaire Chris Minogue, who joins me today to answer some of our questions we have on these topics. But before we start this particular deep dive, I just want to mention this advice is not intended to take the place of professional medical advice. And if you're concerned, please make sure you go and see a GP. Chris, our topic for today is getting rid of the dummy. Good one. But before we go into getting rid of it, can you talk to us about why you might use a dummy in the first place? Okay, so we would use a dummy to help assist a baby to settle in aiding them to go to sleep. But it can get really confusing because there's lots of do's and don'ts as a parent. And so when would I use these things is in part of the process of settling the baby. Now what we mean by that is that in the young baby we'd probably wrap them and cuddle them and nurture them and calm them down, put them into their bed and then we would try shushing and patting and rocking before I would use the dummy. So I'm using the dummy just as a tool and a set in the process of helping the baby, young baby go to sleep. So it's more about that it's attached to the sleep behaviour and not confusing the baby when it's actually hungry and someone might be putting a dummy in their mouth. It's a process and a step in, in that settling and it's not something to keep the baby quiet. So I think it needs to be defined as part of a settling technique and not a general use in babies. All right. When should we be thinking about getting rid of the dummy? What age? It's not so much about the age as as much as it is about the behaviour. So if you're having to go back and use the dummy several times within a sleep window, I'd be starting to think about other techniques I could use to be able to help that baby go to sleep because they're becoming attached to the act of the dummy going back in their mouth to maybe help them go back to sleep. Um, so when that's becoming repetitive, and it's interfering with the baby's natural sleep pattern for its age, then I'd be considering getting rid of a dummy. Okay. So we've decided that it's time to get rid of the dummy based on that information. How do we do it? So at different ages and stages, you would do it in different ways. So you've probably got three windows when you would think about it. You've got the baby who's doing that repetitive spit the dummy out, spit the dummy out. So for that baby, I'd probably be doing more in settling them with myself. So patting, rocking, shushing, picking them up and putting them down and trying not to use the dummy. The dummy might be the very last step that I might use and I'd just wean the baby down off that dummy. In an older baby, say, I don't know, an eight or a nine month old baby, I would probably let them self-settle because they're more in that self-settling age group. So I'd let them self-settle a lot longer and maybe go in and give them more comfort than use that dummy. But then we get to that older range, that those twos, two and a half year olds who are firmly attached to their dummy, it's probably got a name, it goes <laughs> along with them somewhere. So the first thing I do for those babies is I make sure that I'm only using it in a bed. So sometimes they sneak in, grab their dummy, walk around the house with it, have a little suck and put it back in their bed. So I'm getting all the dummies in the house because it's amazing how many dummies you find when you go looking for them. And I'm getting rid of all bar one. So we only have one in the house. So we really have to go and look for it if we're going to give it to them. Then in the older child, I tell them that we're going to take the dummy away. So tonight, it's the last time we're going to have our dummy tomorrow we're going to get rid of our dummy. We're a big boy, a big girl, that type of language. The next day comes along, we say to them, it's time for our dummies to go. So you can do one of two things, chop the top off. Wow. So they just <laughs> cannot suck it. Um, but what I tend to tell parents is, if you're going to be honest to the toddler and say you're getting rid of the dummy, show them that you've got rid of the dummy. So I tend to tell them to throw it out and then to soften the blow, because sometimes it's a big blow, um, we usually go and we get another little maybe bed toy that they can take, because they're big twos and three-year-olds by then, and they could have a little snuggly toy that you could replace that dummy with, okay? My first rule, though, in the very beginning of using dummies is I only use them for sleep, and I don't use them outside of a sleep cue. 
Right. Well, Chris, thank you so much for your advice. That's a pleasure. I'm Siobhan Hunt. See you next time.